Hi, welcome to this quick uh, demo of Docker on Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, my name is Ian Massingham. I'm a technical evangelist with Amazon Web Services based over here in Europe. I'm going to quickly host this session for you today. And what we're going to do today is just show you a demo deployment of uh, deploying an application that's been packaged in a Docker container using the AWS Elastic Beanstalk service, which is a deployment service that will uh, take a code bundle, uh, actually using a variety of different uh, types of language, Java, Ruby, uh, .NET, uh, Python, which is what we're going to be using today, Node.js, uh, and it will uh, evaluate the contents of that uh, deployment bundle and build out an appropriate set of AWS resources to allow you to deploy and execute your application uh, if it's been written in one of those common languages. So we'll show you today a deployment model for deploying Docker containers on Elastic Beanstalk and then show you precisely how we've packaged up our application uh, which we're going to use a Python Flastic application today for this demo. We'll show you precisely what we've packaged up in our application bundle in order to allow it to be uh, deployed within the Docker container on Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is jump over onto the AWS console. And taking a look at the AWS console, you'll say that, see that Elastic Beanstalk is listed here just like any other AWS service. So we're going to jump into our Elastic Beanstalk console. Uh, and we're going to create a new application. Uh, select an application name. I've got quite a few uh, previously used examples here. So we'll use our EB Flask test, test application name. You've got an optional description that you can set there. And if you hit next, you'll then be asked to specify the details of your environment type. So we're going to create a web server tier. We're going to use a predefined uh, configuration, in this case Docker. Uh, and we're going to launch this on a single instance just for demo purposes but if we did select that load balance and auto scaling option it would automatically create a multi availability zone load balanced environment with auto scaling for that tier uh, without us having to do anything beyond uh, work through the deployment process that you're going to see so it's a very simple tool uh, for building out the AWS resources that you might need to run your application uh, we're now asked to specify the application version that we're going to use and we're going to upload our own here uh, and we're going to upload this archive.zip file which contains the specification and assets that are required uh, in this case for our dockerized application uh, and once we've kicked off this process we'll take a look at what's inside that zip file and explain to you uh, what we've created in our development environment in order to e e allow us to execute this deploy process so if we hit next it will then push that archive up into Elastic Beanstalk uh, we're then asked to name our environment and we're going to stick with the defaults here. Nominally you would point a C name at that environment URL that you've created there to allow external users to access your app once you go beyond testing and into production. Uh, you can create additional resources if you wish here, we're not actually going to do this. And then you can configure your environment details. So we're going to launch our uh, environment today on a T2 Micro, which is our latest generation of very small low cost instance. Uh, we're going to have a key pair to enable us to log in if we need to. And we're going to change our root volume type once again to the most recent general purpose SSD volume type to ensure we get the best possible boot performance and make this demo as quick as possible for you today. Uh, hit next. You can add further tags to the environment if you wish. So we could, for example, here put environment demo. Uh, and we will uh, be asked to review the uh, configuration settings that we've selected and then launch our application. And you'll see there that the deployment process is now kicked off and that's going to take a few minutes to execute uh, as Elastic Beanstalk goes away, evaluates the contents of our uh, bundle and then deploys the resources that are required to execute that. Uh, whilst that happens, we will take a look at the contents of the archive.zip file and just show you what was in there uh, so you can uh, get a better appreciation of what's happening in the background here. Uh, and if we take a look at a uh, text editor that contains the assets that we've used here, let's scale this up a bit, you can see uh, we've got various assets, uh, text files that are present within our uh, application bundle here. So the first thing we can take a look at is our docker file and if you look at our docker file you'll see that this is the same as a docker file that you might create to build a docker image uh, within your own environment, within your own on-premises environment or another docker based environment. So we're going to have a base, the Ubuntu 14.4 base in this case, 
And then we've got a series of run statements uh, which are used to compose the container. So we're going to update packages, grab some prerequisites to enable to, us to install the Python-based application that we've developed. We're going to add our requirements.txt file which specifies the dependencies within our Python app. And then we're going to uh, pip install the contents of that pile, bundle the application source, expose a port, port 5000 in this case, and then lastly we're going to execute uh, our application itself, which by this time will have been installed at the slash src slash application.py location inside our container. Uh, so that's a sort of standard Docker file. What's a little bit less standard is this, which is uh, something called docker run.aws.json. And this uh, allows Elastic Beanstalk to wire up uh, the containerized environment to resources that exist on the uh, instance that is running the container. So we're going to connect uh, locations in the host file system uh, into the container to allow it, for example, to access configuration files or write log files out of the container into the host instance file system that is. So uh, that's something that is specific to Elastic Beanstalk you need to create if you're using this particular deployment model. Uh, the other thing that we have as part of our bundle is something called setup.config and this lives in that EB extensions directory that you can see over here within our archive. And uh, this contains uh, dependencies for other AWS services that might be required as part of your deployment process. And what you can see in this particular example is that we have dependencies, a couple of dependencies, a DynamoDB table, an SQSQ, a simple notification service or SNS topic, and an SNS to SQS policy and uh, also some files that we're going to be dependent on. And these files are going to be created within the var app directory that we wired into our container. And these are going to contain some expanded parameters uh, or attributes which are going to be uh, used by our application to configure uh, connections to those dependent services that we've just uh, specified within our uh, setup.config file. Uh, so we're going to identify our region, we're going to get the name of the DynamoDB table that we've created and we're going to get the name of our signup topic and we're going to write those into a file called var slash app slash app config with a particular set of permissions uh, which will then be accessed by our application uh, for configuration purposes and we're going to set some further options as well in there such as uh, environment variables also which we'll come to and talk about later. So those are the important components of our bundle as far as specifying the Docker environment. The other things that we have, of course, are our application itself, which you can see here is a Python Flask application. Uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot about that. It's pretty uh, pretty standard. Uh, and then we've got various other application assets, such as static assets, uh, uh, PNG files that might be used in the app for graphics, and, of course, HTML templates that compose components of the application. So all of that stuff is bundled up within our container and will be installed by the uh, Docker run file uh, that we've already shown you uh, earlier in this demo. So those are our assets. We've packaged all those up into an archive.zip well, which you can see expanded here. So uh, this is what's in our archive.zip, everything that we've just talked about there. Uh, and that's the archive.zip file down here that we've actually pushed into our Elastic Beanstalk environment for the purposes of this deployment. So if we jump back over onto the Elastic Beanstalk console, you'll now see that our deployment is complete and we've been given uh, an a URL that we can use for access to our app. And if we click on that URL, uh, you can see that our application is deployed here. We've created a sign-up page for a new startup uh, which has got functionality. So if we hit on sign up today, we can now enter our details here and uh, as a result of entering our details here uh, we will be signed up for this application. Of course you might ask yourself whether anything really happened in the background when we did that and there's a couple of things that we can do to show you that the application is interacting with those other AWS services that we talked about, those dependent services and also that we can work with the application through the Elastic Beanstalk console. Uh, so the first thing we will do is take a look at the DynamoDB tables uh, that are existing within our AWS account. So we'll jump back over onto DynamoDB, open that in a new tab, uh, and you'll see there that we've created a DynamoDB table. And that DynamoDB table was, was created during that deployment process. Uh, and you can see that if you take a look at the creation date down here, 
and the time at which our video is being recorded up here. We're on Thursday at 10.50 at the moment. This table was created on Thursday at 10.44, so a few minutes ago when I clicked uh, deploy for that application, this create table was created as part of that dependency. And if we take a look inside this table, well, you'll see that the sign-up details that I just entered are present inside that table. So uh, our DynamoDB environment is being, or table rather, is being populated by actions that are being taken within our newly deployed application. And of course, the rest of the resources that were defined there will also be used in a manner which is appropriate for the uh, for the re requirements of the app. So what about uh, what about working with that application in terms of configuration changes? If we wanted to switch it into debug mode or maybe change the theme that we're using, it's possible to do that using environment variables. And you can see those environment variables represented here in this software configuration uh, component of the uh, Elastic Beanstalk console here. And if we were going to click into that, uh, you would see there that the environment variables that have been defined, such as the debug state or the theme that we're using, are available uh, for us to work with here. So if we pick another one of the supported themes, for example, Slate is another one of the supported themes for this application, and we change that environment variable to Slate and then hit Save, uh, you'll see that configuration changes have been validated, and uh, Elastic Beanstalk goes then to update the environment we've created by pushing out that environment variable change into the environment. Uh, and this is how you can uh, work with uh, application or environment variab variables rather that are used within your containers to allow you to debug or configure applications once they've been deployed, maybe using them for feature toggles if you want to turn on or off features as part of a testing or deployment process. Uh, you could use those environments to uh, those environment variables to enable you to do that. So in a couple of minutes, our uh, environment update will be completed. And you'll be able to see at that point, uh, I'll refresh the application and you'll be able to see at that point that uh, the theme that's been used for our app will be modified from the theme that you can see here. Uh, and a new version of our application with that new theme will have been uh, will have been deployed. And you can see that here. So we pushed out that theme change via that environment variable, reloaded loaded the application, and obviously the look and feel of the applications changed as a result of pushing out that new theme. So that's just a quick demo of using environment variables together with Docker and Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to clean down our environment. And this is another one of the sort of benefits of Elastic Beanstalk, really. You know where all your resources are. They're all controlled through your uh, through this management console that AWS provides. And it makes it very easy for you to clean down and terminate environments and make sure that all of the resources that you've used uh, will be cleaned down. And you won't have any orphaned resources in your AWS account that you might be being charged for, but you don't need anymore. Uh, so this will now terminate. If we hit reload on our application again now, you'll see that our application has been uh, terminated. And if we jump back over onto our Elastic Beanstalk console, you'll see that our environment's actually been cleaned down here while we were switched over into that other tab. So, uh, yeah, we don't have our environment anymore. We can also just validate that other resources like our DynamoDB tables have also been cleaned up. So if we go into the DynamoDB console and reload that console view, uh, you should also see that, that dependent resource has been cleaned up and indeed we don't have a Dynamo. DB table there anymore. So that just shows you how the uh, clean down process can be made pretty simple if you're using Elastic Beanstalk for deployment. You can also do it for cleanup uh, and we can delete our application completely which will clean down the Elastic Beanstalk console and take us back to that uh, default view uh, that we started with. So that pretty much concludes the demo that we've got for you today. If you want to know more about Elastic Beanstalk, uh, please visit the URL that you can see at the bottom here, aws.amazon.com slash Elastic Beanstalk. There's a lot of product details there and also a ton of documentation about the different container types that are supported. Uh, you can also, of course, stay up to date with AWS new services, including enhancements to Elastic Beanstalk and other AWS services if you visit us at awsamazon.com slash blogs slash AWS. There's a couple of social media accounts there that you might find also, also find useful for staying up to date with us. And if you've got any feedback or uh, comments that you want to make on the demo, uh, you can reach me by email there or you can uh, tweet me at e m Okay, so thanks for joining us for this quick demo today. Hope that's been useful for you and we'll see you for the next one very soon. Bye-bye.